Greetings, guys, girls, and non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. Today, I am bringing you something that I haven't done for a while, but that I thought would be a fun thing to do, and that is looking at some pointlessly gendered things, because that is always a good time. It's always a good giggle. Um, so that's what we're doing today. But before we get into it, I'm going to stand up and close my window because it is loud outside. Before we get into the video, I would like to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Love and Pies. And I would also like to say thank you to today's patron of the day, Rin. I appreciate you and all of your love and support. Thank you so much for joining and I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if anyone else would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash savvy cat. I'll click the link in the description. It means a lot. Um, it starts at only one pound a month and I appreciate anything, so. Thank you. And so, yeah, let's get into the fun, pointlessly gendered things of the world. <laughs> Here we have an advertisement for some tests. You know how we always get ads for stuff? I personally constantly get ads for like, am I gay quizzes, which is always hilarious to me, um, as well as some of these. And this example is female autism test, test for autism and online ADHD test. And I also get these ads a lot. They're kind of everywhere, which is always quite amusing. But yeah, I love not, not just that they've separated this into gender, like the fact that they have autism test and then female autism test, but the fact that it's like generalizing that a normal autism test is for men and it's different and separate if you are like a woman. Like, um, Surely if you're gonna do female autism tests, it should also be male autism tests, not just autism and female, because that's adds a bit, uh, a weird generalization there. And it's this thing of like, yes, men and women and people of different genders display autism differently a lot of the time, but that's because of social conditioning, not because of like, of the differences as far as I'm aware. Like autism was diagnosed only in boys for a very long time. And that's because boys will be boys, you know, boys aren't told that they have to be like polite and make themselves small and be like a lady and like not interrupt and all that sort of stuff. So it's like not very noticeable in girls because girls are taught from a very young age they have to mask whereas boys are not. You know, this is information that we all know and have which is why a lot more women are diagnosed later in life now because they didn't get diagnoses as children. Yeah, there are differences in that, but like, I feel like autism tests should be, if you're going to separate them like that, they should be done based on like different people and individuals rather than a gender because everyone displays traits of things differently. Everyone does things differently and like exists differently and exists and experiences autism differently. So yeah, that's a big complaint about autism tests, right? Is they're like, really difficult to answer because you get asked like the question of like, do you like collecting stamps? And you're like, no, I don't like collecting stamps. I like collecting this other thing though, you know, that sort of thing. Next up we have these sheet masks, which I'm actually obsessed with. <laughs> Tonight I learned that marketers think men are so fragile, they need a tiny dumb goatee to use a sheet mask. And so it's a sheet mask, but they've printed like a goatee onto the bottom of the sheet mask. And this is honestly my favorite thing ever. Like that's so funny, but I want 10 of them. I will, I want to have like a girl's night where we're like doing pampering and doing face masks and stuff. And we put on these face masks and all have goatees. That's so brilliant. That is hilarious. <laughs> doing this specifically to target men who think it's unmanly to do face masks is so funny. Like the fact that men's ego and like masculinity is that fragile that the only way they would use a sheet mask is if they have a goatee on it. That's hilarious. Um, But like wearing one of those as like a joke, like as a gag gift, that is so good. I love it. That's so funny. I don't particularly understand the point in this, but I would buy it. So they're getting my money. <laughs> Will you press the button? You get the car of your dreams, but it's white, which is a female color, obviously, and you can't change the color, nor can you get rid of the car. Now, I was unaware that white was a gendered car color. This isn't something that I was aware of at all. Um, I didn't really realize there were any 
gendered colors for cars at all. I could see how you'd make an argument for like a pink car because pink is a girl's color, which it isn't. But you know, at least I like understand the place you're coming from. White? White is a, is a girl's color for a car? Bro, what? Why would you pass up your dream car just because it's a color that you think is perceived as feminine? Like no one gives a fuck, bro. It doesn't fucking matter. You could get what? How expensive are cars? Like way too expensive. Like like 60 grand? There's probably cars that are more than that. I don't know. Which is ridiculous. That is an absurd amount of money. And you're gonna pass that up because it's white? You need help. Therapy, please. Because what is wrong with you? You're passing up a car because it's white? Get over it. <laughs> I will have a car that is any color. I don't even care how fancy the car is. If you're giving me a free car, I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you. If you also pay like insurance on it, that would be really great. Insurance, tax, all that shit. If you can do that for me and give me the free car, I'll take it. I don't wanna pay anything, so. Free car with all expenses covered. This is a little comic strip of someone saying, I drew a lesbian couple and it's like a lesbian couple who are like in love. And these three people are saying, I love their designs. They're hot, cute. And then the same artist says, I drew a gay couple too. And you know, she drew a gay couple in love, they're hugging. And the people say, I don't have anything against gay people, but not sure if I can support this. Ew, why? And yeah. This is an unfortunate reality of like life <laughs> and the way people perceive queerness and accept and don't accept queerness. Like the like male gaze of queerness is so gross, you know? It's like this thing of like, people just don't take relationships between two women seriously. They just don't count them as real relationships and they, feel as though they get something out of this. I actually had an experience kind of like this with my own family where my parents are very accepting. They don't care, they don't give a single fuck. Um, but my mom's extended family, like my mom's siblings are a fair bit homophobic despite having other gay family members, they are a bit homophobic. And so my mom told them that I was in a relationship with a girl, that I had a girlfriend. And like the response was that they didn't really care if it was two women together. They just had a problem with two men because they thought that was weird. And I was like, I would honestly almost prefer them being homophobic towards me than this like bordering being sexualized by my family, <laughs> you know? Like, why would you have a problem with two men dating, but you don't have a problem with me having a girlfriend. I don't understand, that makes me uncomfortable. I would almost rather you not like my relationship. I don't talk to them anyway. I don't really have a relationship with my mom's family, so it doesn't even really matter. Like, I don't give a fuck. If they don't accept me being queer, which they don't, one of my family members do not, and has been kicked out of my house. And my mom does not let him into the house anymore. He's like not allowed into the house. But like, I don't care. <laughs> at least, at least he's not a hypocrite about it, you know? Like, I don't want to talk to him or really be associated with him at all, but at least he's not a hypocrite and isn't like making my relationship weird, you know? Anyway, it's gross. It's weird. Blech. You know, I don't really care about my extended family at all. I don't really have much relationship with them. I don't really care at all. My immediate family, like my mom, my dad, my sister, none of them care. They don't care at all. And then my dad's side of the family, the side that I actually see that live in London and in the UK are also very lovely, very accepting. They also don't give a single fuck. Like it doesn't matter. And it's great. Acceptance is great. I'm really lucky to have a family that is so accepting and to very easily be able to cut off people that aren't because I've never had a great relationship with them. Um, because like, you know, it's nice to exist as yourself and be proud of yourself and just be a person without having any fear around who you're dating and things like that. And I know that that's not an experience a lot of us have, which is really upsetting. And I really hope that if you are in a situation where your family or friends don't accept you as who you are, I hope that you know that a lot of people do. And I hope that you're able to find like a safe space. I hope that you feel safe here. Um, and I hope that, you know, you're able to find accepting people and are able to feel comfortable expressing yourself, whether that be now or in the future. I really hope that that is something that you find. Speaking of pride and acceptance, 
<laughs> I want to take a moment to tell you about today's sponsor, Love and Pies, whom presently are rebranded as Love and Pride. It is a mobile game where you have a bakery and the bakery has burnt down. Your bakery is not in good condition, but you've got to rebuild the bakery and also continue to make orders for people. And it's just a lot of fun. It's like nice and mindless slash mindful, I suppose, where you can just sit on your phone and like spend ages doing it without even realize that you're spending ages doing it. And particularly right now, they want to celebrate pride and show that, you know, queer relationships are important and they're valid and they should be represented. So they are celebrating that at the moment with having a lot of queer storylines um, in their game because this game is great and it has a bunch of like storylines in between the actual gameplay, which are really fun to read along to. So there is a special two week collection at the end of this month where you help Yuka and Sven throw a big party to reach milestones and challenges and decorate the bakery in a fun and prideful gay way. <laughs> and so it's just a lot of fun to follow along this little cute gay story within this story and I love the animations and I just love how shameless it is and that you get to enjoy this little story for the end of this month. It's a great way to have a fun little game and also have a little pride celebration in your little game. You can use the link in my description and have a good time building a little gay bakery and fulfilling some gay little orders because we love that. Uh, thank you so much, Love and Pies, Love and Pride for celebrating uh, Pride Month with us this year and for sponsoring today's video. I appreciate it and I recommend you all check the link in my description now. Moving into some more fun, pointlessly gendered things is we have <laughs> this question, this poll that is, which of these adjectives best describe you? And there are these options. Well-educated, intelligent, complex, aggressive, masculine, alpha, sensitive, emotional, deep, family person, religious, Christian. So it only includes Christian for some reason. And then men only happy social outgoing and girls only happy social outgoing. And I have so many questions about this. Like one, why did you use men and girls instead of men and women or boys and girls? That's an interesting choice you made. And then also why only those two? Why are those specifically the ones that you have to be gendered? I love that happy social and outgoing is gendered, but masculine and alpha and aggressive isn't gendered. <laughs> That's hilarious to me. I love that we're acknowledging anyone can be masculine, alpha and aggressive. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm so baffled by this choice here. Why is happy, social, and outgoing gendered? Why, why do you have to separate those two out? Are they experienced differently? I really would like you to sit down and explain to me why those are gendered because I like cannot for the life of me figure it out at all. Like what? What? Here we have an article about Michael Buble that says, you are my pride and joy. Michael Buble is never afraid to be left alone with his four kids. Michael Buble is Mr. Mom who can take care of all four of his kids at once. You mean like a father? Like, <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Like, okay. uh, So this is expected of women with absolutely no celebration, no praise, no gratitude. It's just like, yeah, no, that's just a woman's job. That's what a woman should do. Be able to look after all four kids of her at once. And that's like normal. And then a man does it and you're like, oh my God, what is he, a woman? What <laughs> Mr. Mom, that's just called a father. That's just, you should be able to look after your kids. That's like one of the qualifying factors of being a dad. That's like literally the job description is look after your kids. What do you mean? What do you, what do you mean, Mr. Mom? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever had. I think that this just demonstrates that we really need to show more appreciation to mothers. Uh, and we also need to raise the bar of what we expect from fathers because you sh this is this should be normal. There should not be a whole article written about how a man looks after his children. What are you doing? Movies when a woman is sexually harassed and it's SpongeBob kind of being like, hmm? And then movies when a man is sexually harassed and it is SpongeBob just like laughing maniacally. And yet this is unfortunately super true. And it's always so uncomfortable. Like in movies and TV shows and stuff, they always use sexually harassing men as like a punchline, as a joke. It's always like, ha 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 ha, you are sexually harassed. That's hilarious. And it's just like this big 
joke. And it's so uncomfortable because like, it's not funny. Like it's not, it's not funny. Sexually harassing men isn't funny. And then on the other hand, yeah, they sexually harass women and like no one bats an eye. It's just seen as normal because it is. So it's like written into shows and movies that women are sexually harassed. And that's kind of just like a normal thing that you expect, like no one does anything, no one says anything, they don't even address it. It's just like, no, this is how you talk to women. And so there's like a problem on both ends. And I think the solution here, the only solution is don't incorporate sexual harassment into your TV shows and movies, unless it's like a focal point and you're going to talk about it and discuss it and like come up with a resolution. Like Tuka and Birdie. Tuka and Birdie is such a fantastic show, especially season one. And like, cause the main focus point around it is like being a woman and existing and like having your body objectified and taken away from you and like all that sort of stuff. It's a fantastic show. It's the sister show of Bojack Horseman is the same like writer and artist and stuff. And so if you like Bojack Horseman, I really recommend Tuka and Betty. It's a different style in which it's like funnier. It's like much lighter, but also like much more focused around women's issues and there are actually protagonists. They're not all <laughs> like bad people. You are rooting for them. Um, it is a fantastic, fantastic show and I really need to rewatch it. I've seen it so many times, but I, I love it. I don't have Netflix anymore though, so I can't rewatch it. When you do it like that, like they do in Tuka and Birdie, where they like talk about it and it's the focal point and the show's point is showing you how normal sexual harassment is in the workplace and how normal it is for a woman to just be treated badly and taken advantage of and just have no one do anything about it, then it's good, it's important. It's not seen as a joke. It's not seen as a throwaway. It's not seen as something that just happens. It is showing the discomfort and why it's a problem. And that's important, you should do that. But unfortunately, most of the time, sexually harassing women, A-OK. -okay. Sexually harassing men, fucking hilarious. Both of those, bad. We need to cut it out. <laughs> we need to stop doing that. Girls go to restaurants to take pictures and boys go to restaurants to discuss the restaurant owner's profit. Well, I personally go to restaurants to eat the food. <laughs> I don't go to restaurants to do anything other than eat the food and like, you know, enjoy the company or whatever. But like, that's not why I'm there. I'm not going to a specific restaurant to like take photos or talk about the owner's profit. Like what? The only time I've gone to like a restaurant where like photos are more the priority than the food is when I went to the bar that New Girl is filmed in because obviously, <laughs> and I still ate some of the food. I did not go there for the food. I went there entirely just because New Girl is my favorite show in the entire world. It's my comfort show. I've watched it a bajillion times. Um, and so obviously I had to go and obviously I had to take a ton of photos. I don't need to justify myself. Actually, I don't even know why I tried to justify myself there. It's unimportant. It doesn't matter. You can go to restaurants and take a ton of photos if you want. That's totally fine. But men do that too. <laughs> and also some women like to discuss profits and stuff, but also like, why would you? Why would you go to a restaurant just to discuss the profits and do that at home? I don't understand. I don't get it. Go to the restaurant to eat the food. That's literally the only purpose of restaurants. Go and eat the food. Do you enjoy school? Yes, male. No, male. Yes, female. No, female. Yes, European. No, European. The three genders, male, female, and European. <laughs> I really wanna know why it's separated like this. That's so funny. That's brilliant. Good. I love, it's very important, obviously, to have these three distinguishes. Um, I understand male and female because like, you know, it, for polls and whatever, like having gendered outcomes can be useful sometimes being like more girls enjoy school than boys do. And like, I wonder why that is, you know, I like, I get it. European being on here. What? Cartoon characters have a different puberty talk. Sweetie, you're becoming a woman now. Soon you'll develop long eyelashes and a hair bow. <laughs> the only way to tell if a character is a boy or a girl, the lashes and the hair bow. So true. And I love that this applies to literally everything. It applies to inanimate objects. It applies to literally everything. This could be the house talking right now and the house tomorrow could have eyelashes and a hair bow. And then you'd be like, okay, no, that's a girl house. And it's just, it's so funny. It's hilarious because I hate to break this to you, everyone, no matter what your gender is, most people have eyelashes. 
And anyone can wear a hair bow. In fact, I don't know anyone who does wear a hair bow. I love how that's become like a gendered thing. I love how that's something that people are like, yeah, this is how you know if it's a girl. They wear a hair bow. Why? Like, is that a historical thing? I feel like it's not. I don't really understand where that came from. Why a hair bow? Have you ever made a men's crochet scarf? It can be intimidating to crochet for men. You just have to get the right stitch. It can't be too feminine, but also not boring. Last Christmas, my boyfriend had hinted at wanting a crochet scarf. So I decided it was time to tackle the project and find the perfect stitch for a men's scarf. What? Um, what? <laughs> huh? I don't, I don't understand. Is there a different, how, what? I am new to crocheting. The only thing I know how to do is single crochet because I uh, don't want to learn a new thing. So I <laughs> I learned to crochet and the first thing I decided to do is make a blanket and it's taken me a month and I'm not even close to being finished. Um, and that's the only thing I know how to do because trying to learn new things is difficult and I like being good at things and I can do this. So therefore it is what I am doing. And I don't understand how this would at all be gendered. And since it's the easiest thing to do, surely you would just do that. Can someone tell me how single crochet would be like at all? at all gendered, you can make a scarf out of single crochet. Is that meant, is that feminine? How would you make a masculine crochet if, it's all the same, okay? It's different, but it's like, it's not that different. You can't really tell from a distance if it's a scarf. I have questions. Can someone let me know their thoughts? Tell me, tell me, I don't know anything about crochet, really. And I don't think there is an answer. I think that this is the most ridiculous question ever. Um, and I think you should just make a scarf and it doesn't matter. But you know, if anyone has any ideas, let me know what you come up with. I am intrigued to know. Um, and with that, I am going to end this video here. I hope that you enjoyed. It's a little bit more fun and lighthearted than usual. I thought it was nice to take a little bit of a break from the normal intense content that I make. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I am here twice a week and I would love to see you again. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. And a massive thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Toulouse, Bobby, Josh, Mandy, Robbie, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Ida, Quia Corey, Raven, Danielle, Elias, Evie, Rin, Jewel, Sparrow, Apollo, Taylor's Trying, Matto, and Chris. I love and appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash Savvy Cat. I'll click the link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early, as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, vlogs, and more. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. <laughs>